if our voters will support us on this election. Um, you know, we believe that somewhere between 175, 175 to maybe as much as $200,000 a year would come in in revenue from the uh, hotel motel tax. Uh, uh, we've got three-year window, so to speak, we're working with on the, uh, with the legislature. They, you know, this bill that they, uh, uh, that they sent to us but it has a three-year repealer on it. Uh, but we believe in those three years with what he does here, with what he generates in revenue, plus what we can generate from the hotel motel tax revenue, we'll be able to get these two fields done. And uh, so at the end of the three years, we should be able to see uh, fields three and four completed the co-ed softball tournament to raise money for a family in our area. Um, we had 18 teams. We pulled teams out of Wiggins, Baton Rouge, um, Liberty, uh, all over, you know, our southwest Mississippi. Um, I think if we expanded the, the fields here that we could pull even more teams in from further away and it would help our community locally. My name is Michael Clements. I am the head baseball coach of Parkland Academy and we have we've hosted some some junior high and junior varsity baseball tournaments here at the complex and it's 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 really made a big difference in in helping us to be able to promote get you know get our players and out where they where they can have other other places to play. Uh, you know, with us being at the school, we're only the only option we have is to, is one field. And by coming over here at this complex, it, it allows us to have at least a couple fields where we can get a lot more games in in a couple days. I'm B.J. Nettles. I'm chief of McComb Fire Department, but I also coach 11 and 12 year old fast pitch uh, softball girls league. Uh, right now, we are playing in the McComb League, a uh, regular season but All-Stars are coming up. Uh, we also try to play numerous tournaments uh, throughout the year. Uh, last year we attempted to host a tournament here at the Macomb Sports Park, but due to only having two fields, we were not able to because of the number of entries. Uh, we had more people that entered than we could host the tournament. So therefore we had to go elsewhere and host the tournament. Uh, this would be real beneficial not only to our local community but to be able to bring revenue into our city by being able to host uh, regional qualifiers, uh, local tournaments, state tournaments. I would strongly support the motel hotel tax. Uh, money is not going to be a tax to our local citizen, but our local citizens and businesses will get the benefit of this tax. Uh, obvious, beyond the obvious of having a place for people to come and use here in the community, I also see it as a very useful tool for bringing new people to this city that you normally would not have coming to the city. And it only takes one person out of that group ever so often to maybe witness something here that they want to contribute to this city in the future. And it would benefit everybody other than just being able to come and play here and having uh, a finished park. It will park. broaden us in the hotel industry. It will broaden us in the, the food industry. We've participated in the British soccer camp. That British soccer camp happens every summer and it's expanding every year. Um, the Macomb Sports Park would also be an integral part to the community if we could kind of move it towards the arts and dance area. I would love to see it expand into cheerleading and dance camps and offering this to the children that are in the community. But as far as soccer, I wanted to expand there too. I'm Ann Sego Coney, the general manager of the Hampton Inn and Suites Macomb. The hotel tax would be beneficial for the city to be able to build an additional ball field. Baseball tournaments would bring families to the city of Macomb to shop, eat, and sleep. I'm very much in support of the sports park here the, uh, and the other recreational facilities that we've got in Macomb. Uh, but a sports park like this with the design that it's intended to be with bringing a lot of people in from outside, this is real economic development. The definition of economic development is bringing dollars in from outside your community. And programs like this will do that. Uh, it'll be very meaningful to bring in, help out with the motels, the restaurants, the shopping, other things that we have here. 
Uh, so it'll be very beneficial to all of us in some way, shape, or form. Plus, just the fact that we've got this type of facility here is something that the community itself can be proud of. Uh, it's nice to have a facility like this that you can talk to other people in other parts of the state and say, come see what we've got here. Teams in, in in several hours or whatever, um, just so that they would be able to travel back home Sunday. We, we bring in a lot of the a lot of teams from from all over. You know, last year I think our junior high tournament we had about eight teams, and our junior varsity tournament we had about six different teams come in. We have a lot of teams from the Jackson area, Jackson Academy, Jackson Prep, Madison Ridgeland Academy coming in. Uh, some teams, Bowling Green from Silliman, uh, uh, some some teams like that from Louisiana, and. With this complex here, this finally allows us here in the Macomb area to be able to offer tournaments. Whereas, you know, the Jackson schools and other places like that, they have tournaments all the time because they have complexes like this. And if we had, you know, I, f I feel strongly that if we had, had a couple more fields here, that it would really help towards generating, you know, people coming into this area. As a newly elected mayor and a board newly elected, uh, in December uh, of 10, we had a retreat at the sports park and all department heads came and, and talked to us about their particular needs. And, you know, we learned several things. We learned first and foremost that the city was bare bones budget. We had no wiggle room in our budget. And most of the departments were working on reduced staff and so, you know, they had made the necessary cuts that were had made cuts that were necessary to you know, get through the tough financial times and, and financially things are still in that way, it's still tough. Um, but I recognize that we had a sports complex that, complex that was halfway complete, we have two fields, and it's not living up to its potential. And so uh, at that point in time I, I decided that I was going to try to get the board to approve, in, in which they ultimately did, we passed a resolution uh, to, uh, to, for approval of a hotel motel tax. And the legislature, the Senate, Senate signed off on it, the governor signed, and so we're, it leads us up to July 19th, we'll have an election. The citizens will have to ultimately approve this uh, hotel motel tax. And we're hopeful that they will, it will allow us to have these uh, monies to shift and funnel toward our uh, sports complex. We've got, you know, I, I know that general fund dollars are not available, can't get it there. You know, bond, additional bond debt is not an option. So the hotel motel tax makes sense. And it's not going to be a tax that's going to be applied onto our local citizens. It's going to, it's a tax that will be applied to uh, our visitors that come uh, to the city and stay at our hotels and motels. When the sports complex is complete, you know, they'll run tournaments uh, that will bring people to the city for long weekends and, you know, they'll stay and use our, our hotels and our motels and, you know, they'll use our restaurants and it, it'll be a good thing for the city all, all around, very beneficial to all concerned, I do believe. The, the aerial photograph we have now uh, will show you the 50-acre site that the city of Macomb has that we now call our Macomb Sports Park. It is bordered on the north side by Baycott Avenue, on the south side by Vogel Street, and then South Magnolia Street will be the, the front side, the west border, that comes off of Highway 98. We are one mile from the interstate, Interstate 55, and uh, just two blocks off of Highway 98. What we have completed at this point is a 10-acre block of the sports park that has our main building structure here with our offices, our press box, concession stand, and meeting room. It also has two championship softball or baseball fields that are completed. They're 300 feet all the way around on both fields. And what we'd like to do is complete fields three and four is the main focus at this point. This is field one, we have field two here, and field three here on the south side. Home plate back here on the west side in the trees. And we'll wrap around, and then field four right here will be an actual, a uh, little bit larger field. It'll actually be 330 feet left and right field and out to 380 feet or 400 feet in center field so we can actually accommodate some baseball. The 300 foot softball fields, these first three, uh, will be able to accommodate youth baseball or junior varsity baseball from a high school standpoint, girls fast pitch or adult softball leagues, co-ed softball leagues, 
And the reason for having the fourth field a little bit larger is so that we could accommodate high school baseball or college or universities to come in and have exhibition games and such as that. We will have the capability of bringing in a portable fence in here and uh, making sure that those fields could be uh, changed up to 300 feet as well to match fields one, two, and three. Again, so field four will have 330 in left and right out to about 400 in center field with the ability to put a portable fence in to give us a full four fields of 300 feet for a large softball tournament. We have a maintenance barn on the back side of our sports park that supports the entire area here. We have a multi-purpose field that we play flag football on, soccer, and other activities like that. We have uh, church reunions that, and uh, band camps and things like that. People will come out and, and march and use the, the field there. A parking lot to support this area here. There are future plans for a walking trail that will wrap around the entire sports park, be one mile long. It'll start right here at the, near the corner of Vogel and Magnolia Street. It will uh, move eastwardly across the park, wrap around back to the Baycott area, and tie back in here to the uh, front of the sports park. We also have two and a half acres on the north side of the sports park that is leased to the Miracle League. They are in the process of developing a field for people with disabilities, and the field is being constructed uh, in this area. We'll also use a, a parking lot that we've constructed here, a gravel parking lot, that can be used by both Miracle League and the sports park participants to um, come view and watch and spectate for the activities.